I went to the charity shop and I bought this rack to put on my training board. And honestly, that was it. Now that doesn't sound like a very exciting video, does it? But I went to Sandwich here in Kent a couple of weeks ago and I thought rather than waste the footage that I filmed, you might enjoy a tour of this beautiful historic town. And if that isn't for you, skip along to the end of the video and I'll show my thrift haul from other charity shop adventures over the last six weeks or so. Hello there, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. Welcome to Sandwich, the most beautiful historic town full of narrow streets and interesting looking buildings. We start here in the main square and don't worry, we'll be coming back to that charity shop a little bit later and to that church where it had an amazing vintage market. As we sweep ourselves around the market, we visited the little ironmongers, that was very late in the day and also the vintage shop next door, but I don't think I've got any footage of that. And this is the Guildhall Museum, and one of the rooms there was stayed in by Queen Elizabeth I in 1573. And you'll notice as we come full circle, there is the sandwich shop. And if you don't know, the name Sandwich was coined when the fur fourth Earl of Sandwich asked for some beef to be served between two slices of bread. This is the inside of St Mary's Church, which is believed to be the oldest church in Sandwich. And although still consecrated, it isn't laid out for church services and it's used for concerts and community events. So on to our first charity shop and this is the Age Concern Charity Shop, which is in the main market square. And I'm noticing lots of royal memorabilia. This mug is commemorating the wedding of Diana Spencer to the Prince of Wales. And there is a coronation mug from Queen Elizabeth II. For four pounds. Obviously bought in Cambridge. Now this is an interesting piece. Chippendale glass, a huge fruit bowl for £25. Are you an expert in Chippendale glass? Now watch on to the end of the video when I share my thrift haul because I've got a few questions about this glass. More royal memorabilia, a little plate there for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. As well as looking for flower range and vases containers, I always check out the second-hand books. So if you're not familiar with searching for flower arranging books in a charity shop, you need either to head to the gardening section or the crafts, and they're normally in one or the other. So this is a book on dried flower arranging. Probably only cost a couple of pounds. I didn't check the actual price because to me this just seemed a little bit too dated although I will say the really old fashioned books normally have a really great introductory section on the history and mechanics and general advice about looking after your flowers. So one to look out for next time you visit your own charity shop. A more royal memorabilia, a very understated teacup and saucer set celebrating the Queen's golden jubilee. This shop was set out over two floors and from the first floor staircase you can see out onto the historic market square and that's the Guildhall Museum just off to the left hand side. This is St Peter's Church, cafe tables laid out and as we went through the doors my friend commented that you can actually go up the church tower and get a view out over the town. We just didn't have time to do that this time round. So we'll definitely be back. But we went into the main church and it was all set out with an array of market stalls. I always head out to look for the books first of all. I've got one friend who heads out to look at the crockery and another who's always on the search for fabric for creative projects. Here are the books that I'm looking for. Flowers sandwiched between fix for dummies and gardening. This is Malcolm Hillier's book on flowers, 
quite a popular one in the charity shops, but a good starting point if you don't have any other flower arranging books. Again, a little bit dated as you flick through the pages. There's always an idea that you can pick up, a little bit of knowledge that can be gained. And this is another Malcolm Hillier book, A Guide to Arranging Dried Flowers. Dried flowers are really, really popular at the moment. And if you don't want to go out and buy an expensive new book, just pop into your charity shop, or like here, a church sale, and you'll be able to pick up a book for probably just two or three pounds. Perhaps you've got a wedding on the horizon. This book by Karen Busson was just absolutely beautiful. I think perhaps she's an American writer. I seem to have a very Californian vibe to the book. A great one for flicking through for ideas and inspiration if you've been asked to do the flowers for your next family wedding. I'm always intrigued about what you can find in the charity shop. Just look at this bowler hat, the original. How unusual is that? It's like going into your own personal museum of life. And look, more royal stuff. A thimble commemorating the wedding of Charles and Diana. By now we've been in Sandwich for a good few hours and we're getting a little bit hungry so we're heading off for a very late lunch. So walking back across in front of St Peter's Church in search of something good to eat. And as we head off for our very light lunch, I thought you'd like to see a few other books that I've come across over the last few weeks. And I will say, I don't think, with exception of one, I bought any of these. I do really enjoy flicking through them and hopefully you will do too. This book is by Janice Harper. I've not come across her name before. Same sort of style of arranging. Probably dating from the 1980s, I would have thought. Lots of pedestal arrangements, some in a more modern or contemporary style. As I say, the beginning chapters are always really useful for general information, even if you think the flower arrangements are a little bit dated. This book by Pauline Mann has got a few interesting pages on colour. It's always good to have a little bit of colour theory under your belt to help you put together your arrangements in a pleasing combinations. There was certainly a bumper crop of flower arranging books the day I visited this charity shop. This one is by Derek Bridges, but it's just the luck of the draw. Sometimes you find nothing and sometimes you find loads and loads of things to intrigue you. If you think that the last few books I've shown you are a little bit too old-fashioned, I think you'll really enjoy Paula Pryke's book called Flower School. It's much more modern in outlook and she always has the most amazing colour and flower combinations, so well worth a read. This is a second charity shop in my hometown and when I come to think about it I mentioned to a friend that I'd spotted loads of flower arranging books and she said that she was the one that had donated them all. Now I'm not really into plants but this book called Decorating with Plants again donated by my friend and I did go back and buy it. The opening chapters were really interesting. So let's move on to the thrift haul section of the video. My first find of the month were these little test tubes and I found these at an antique store close to home. I, I particularly like these ones with the little scientific details on them. And these are quite inexpensive and in fact I think they were probably cheaper than buying them online. So I've got three with the little measurements on and three blank test tubes which are really great for more contemporary style flower arrangements and of course going foam free. Just fill them up with water, put in a single flower and if you want to tie a little bit of string around the edge and then you can have a floating flower arrangement. 
what do you think of this little glass container here? Now, I didn't pay anything for this because my friend was having a clear out. And it's a little container in two parts. I don't think, though, that the two parts originally would have come together. You see this little bit of the scallop edging. I don't think, although the flower frog is a good fit at the top, I don't actually think they were made for each other. Perhaps this was some kind of sugar bowl, a little footed container. The little details here of the round buttons and then the slotted shapes here will disguise any chicken wire I decide to put into the middle to hold up my flowers. Or of course I could slot in the glass flower block and arrange my flowers through that instead. And if you'd like to find out about flower blocks and pin holders, other ways of holding your flowers in place without using flower foam, head on to the description underneath this video and I will leave a link to a couple of my recent videos which you may find of interest. This container came from the same friend, a little footed container. You may have seen this before in the segment I filmed on compots, footed containers that are really handy for flower arrangements. So this one here has got a lovely glazed inside edge and a hole down the middle so it would be really lovely if you had a small hand tied posy. And the edge here is all knobbled and gnarled. I'm thinking this is probably made in the 1960s. And talking about Julia Clements, I've made a list of all the containers I'll need to recreate her arrangements. And one of those was to make an arrangement in a seashell. And lo and behold, no sooner had I written myself out a shopping list than I found this out at the front of one of my local charity shops in town. And as you can see, I paid a pound. Probably not something I would have bought to enjoy at home if I wasn't doing my Julie and Julia project. And some glassware here. Now this will be pressed glass. It's a semi-circular container and I quite like the idea of this so I could put it on my mantelpiece and butt it hard up against the mirror and then I could make myself a tiny little arrangement, perhaps with spring flowers, but if the reflection in the mirror would make it look like a complete circle. So I have got some ceramic posy bowls, so I'm going to call this a semicircular posy bowl in pressed glass. And this one cost me a pound. He's a bit of a clean. Quite like the ridging all the way around the edges. So probably, probably what I'll do is to scrunch up some wire inside just to support my really short stemmed spring flowers. Perhaps some snowdrops, primroses, or grape hyacinths, just something small and delicate. Now, do you remember the very expensive piece of Chippendale glass I showed you on the video clips from the charity shops in Sandwich? Now, I spotted this, also a pound. Is this Chippendale glass? It's got the trophy style handles, the hexagonal foot plate, and the ridged sections at the top. Now, I am no expert at all, but do you know anything about Chippendale glass? Have I got the real deal here for one pound? And what about this? I've had this little container for absolutely ages. It probably cost me a couple of pounds. Do you think that could be a Chippendale salt? I'm not sure at all. So it's got a little dip at the bottom, the trophy style handles, the, hexag the hexagonal base, and then the scalloped shaped edges around the top. The two together, what do you think? This one here though has a flat base rather than the indentation of the salt. And then what about this? Is this Chippendale glass? The difference here though is that the bottom of the container isn't that very distinct hexagonal shape and it's got this cutout detail at the bottom. So although they look quite similar, the bases are different. And if that's Chippendale glass, I'm guessing this is just a copy. But it's got those distinctive handles and that scallop shaping around the edge. So if you know more about Chippendale glass than I do, 
Let me know in the comments what I should be looking out for. I nearly forgot I picked up some magazines as well. So these were for sale in a local vintage store. This one, Christmas magazine, was £2, but the other one was 50p. And I always find these a really great source of inspiration. I, I can never resist a Christmas magazine. Always packed full of lovely ideas. And when I've read them for 50p, I can afford to pass them on to a friend. I do hope you enjoyed following along with me as I shopped the historic streets of Sandwich. And if you're local to the area or perhaps from further afield, it would be a great location for a little mini break. And Canterbury is only about 10 miles away. Let me know in the comments whether I've been buying reproductions or whether I've got my hands on the real deal. That's all for me for now. And I'll see you again next time.